so glad to have you to join in with us again, bringing you greetings from St. Philip Monumental African Methodist Episcopal Church here in the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia. You may notice that we've changed venues on today because we have some construction work that is going on in our church. We have an elevator that is being installed, like many churches. Of course, our church and our congregation is aging. We're all a day older today than we were yesterday. Uh, but we have the need of an elevator, and uh, we are so glad that God is blessing us with that elevator. And we thank God for each and every one of you there, those of you who have been contributing and donating to that cause. We thank you. There perhaps are others who would like to donate to it. And so uh, please feel free to send it, of course, to um, our address and our post office box, or feel free to drop it by the church on any morning uh, between the hours of 9 and 1. Again, we thank God for you. We pray that you and your family are safe, and we pray that you are following the CDC guidelines and that you are wearing your mask and remaining six feet um, as you go out and you do those things that you have to do. Also, I'd like to remind you to please um, vote. Um, please vote early. There are some early voting going on in various locations of our, uh, not only our city, but our state as well as our country. Please do that. Exercise your right to vote. And uh, we thank and praise God for every minister of the gospel that may be joining in with us on today. Those that uh, work with us here at St. Philip Monumental, those that are in other AME churches as well as other Baptists or whatever church you may be a, a part of, we thank God for you on today. Thank God for all of the laity, all the officers and members here at St. Philip Monumental, and those that are in other churches or congregations, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. On last week, I began a series, and the series had to do with three things that every Christian should know. And uh, we dealt with David uh, in his Psalm 23. On this week, I'd like to deal with the Lord's Prayer. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Put your hands together. Say this with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. So we say day that the Lord has made. Let's go. 
Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and lift him. He's worthy, he's worthy. 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 Good morning, my brothers and sisters. We greet you in the joy of Jesus. It's again that God has permitted us to gather together again in his holy name. Let us pray. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Thank God for another day. God, we come this morning seeking your divine presence, knowing, God, that you are our Father and we're your children, and somehow we erred and went astray from your word. But here we are this morning saying thank you for another opportunity just to praise your holy name. We thank you for being a healer because so many persons in the land this day need a healing. So we know that you can do it, and we know that you didn't bring us to it where you couldn't do it, but we know that everything will be all right. We ask that you bless the pastor of this church and his family, bless leadership of the state of Georgia, our bishop and his family. We thank you for just leadership. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who thought it was not robbery, to leave home in heaven and come down in this world to lead us to a higher heights. We thank you this day, Lord God, for just being God all by yourself. God, God, we ask a special blessing upon our children. They need to know, God, that you still exist. And one of these days, they must come in out of the rain and say, Lord, I yield, I yield. Can't hold out no longer. We thank you. And if you would be so kind, God, to bless them and Keep them in your care. Let them know that you are their father and they they are your children. And then God bless our families everywhere. Bless mankind everywhere. Bless those that are less fortunate than we are. And then, Lord God, when it's all over, when we must quit this busy walk of life and enter into our dark room, save us into thy kingdom without the loss of one, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning comes from the 23rd Division of Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord for God's people. Amen. Let us pray upon with the crowd.
The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Christian should know. Last week I dealt with Psalm 23. Psalm 23, of course, was penned by David, and many of you are just like me. You were brought up in homes where you had to learn or to recite uh, Psalm 23. Thank God we had to do that because now we're older and Psalm 23 is a part of all of our lives. Those of us who understand that God is such a good God and that He is an intentional God. There is another element to what I believe that we ought to know. And that other element, of course, is prayer. I believe that we ought to all know the Lord's Prayer. There are some who will call it the model prayer. Uh, when we look at the Lord's Prayer, we find the Lord's Prayer in two places in the New Testament. We find it in the Gospel as recorded by Matthew chapter 6, and the Gospel is recorded by Luke uh, chapter 11. For the sake of sermon today, I'd like to call your attention to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning at verse number 9. This is Jesus talking according to my translation. This then is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We thank God on today for being able to look at the gospel as recorded by Matthew. When we look at Matthew's gospel, we find here Jesus is in, at the Sermon on the Mount. And when we understand prayer, it is important that we understand that prayer is our way of communicating with God. 
When we understand prayer, we understand that prayer ought to be a very important part of the arsenal, if you will, of a Christian. A Christian ought to uh, really focus on prayer. How often? Every day. He, should, he or she should focus on the fact that, that this is our opportunity, this is our way of communicating with God. And, and it's just like anything else that we do, that we uh, ought to love to do, uh, that we, don't, we never get enough of praying. You can never pray too much. And so when we look at prayer, it is important that we recognize that there are some, some factions and some factors concerning prayer. I would like to just list three uh, up to you on, on today. And, and, and first of all, I want you to know that, that God hears your prayers. That God hears your prayers. I'm talking to someone because you've been praying a long time and it seems as if no, nothing has changed yet. It seems as if there are things that are still the same. Uh, but you find yourself still praying, and, and, and every now and then you can become just just a, a, a little out of it, a little out of touch, if you will, wondering when is God going to do whatever God is going to do. God hears your prayer. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 12, the Bible declares, this is God talking, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. Someone needs to know that God hear your prayer. You're concerned that God hear the prayer you prayed yesterday. I want to answer that question. The answer is yes. He heard the prayer that you prayed yesterday. He heard the, he heard the prayer that you prayed, prayed today already. You may continue to be praying all day. If you're like me, you're going to have to pray a, a, a lot of times. Once or twice, sometimes don't do it. Sometimes you're going through things that you're going to have to continuously pray about. And, and I want you to know that not only is God hearing the prayer that you're praying now, but he's going to hear the one you pray tomorrow also. So don't stop praying. When we understand prayer, we are, not only do we understand that God hears our prayer, but we also understand that God can do something about it. When we look at Mark, the gospel is recording by Mark, 11th chapter, verse number 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. That's a faith trip, if you will. You have to believe that you're receiving even that which you're praying for. I'm believing with somebody today on those issues that you've been praying about. You've been praying about your children. You've been praying about your situation. You've been praying about your circumstances. I'm believing with you on today that, that, that you will receive that which you have been praying for. I believe that God can do it. Third, I'd like to lift up to you the fact that uh, when we ask, we ought to ask those things that are in the will of God. I want you to know that God has a will. And uh, when we look at it, uh, 1 John, the 5th chapter and the 14th verse, this is the confidence we have in appearing um, and, and, and approaching God. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Yes, yes, yes. You know what you need to ask God for. You know those things you don't need to be asking God for. But those things that line up with his will, I come to tell you today that he will give those things to you. And so we thank and praise God for being able to look here in this 20, in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter. Again, we find that this is in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and by the time we get to chapter number six, we find that, that Jesus has already instructed on giving to the needy. But afterwards, he talked about prayer. And when he talks about prayer, he, he reminds you and I that, and, and he's talking, of, of course, to the disciples. And anyone hearing the Sermon on the Mount, he, he, he's letting us know that, 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 that we should not pray as hypocrites. That, that it's all right for you to know all of the big words. It's all right for you to have gone to school. That's fine. But, but when it comes to prayer, that we shouldn't pray prayers that are going to be tickling to other people's ears. That people are going to just know uh, uh, how scholastic we are because of the way we pray. Because of the way we pray. As a matter of fact, when you're really going through some things, you don't care how you sound. You just want to pray and you got to get the prayer. When you're really going through some things, every now and then, you're going to split some verbs. The subject and the verb are not going to agree, but you're going to get those words out of you. I'm talking about praying extemporaneously. There are all of us, all of us, most of us, we are familiar with, with, with praying extemporaneously. What is that? We pray those things that come to our heart 
and come to our head and we're we're dispersing those things to God and, 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 and we're letting him know how we feel. Yes, when you're really going through, when someone in your family is really going going through, that, that every now and then you're going to pray. As a matter of fact, most of us have had to pray until we've cried sometimes in order to make sure uh, uh, that we have, have even shown, if you will, uh, our our uh, ourselves to God. And when he, he also talks about the fact that when we pray, go into our room. We ought to go into our room and close the door and, and pray to our Father who is unseen. Yes, the literal interpretation of this scripture is that every now and then we have to go into a room. I'm talking about you and I. Every now and then you have to get away from some people. Some people, while they might not hinder your prayer, they can't hinder your praying. Sometimes you, you, or you're not comfortable around some people. Now, I'm not saying they're bad people. Sometimes you just need to get away and call on the Lord God. But also, every now and then, it becomes just a, a frame of mind that every now and then, you're going to have to pray while you're riding down the street. You're going to have to pray on your job. Some of us have worked on jobs that we got to go sometime and get in our own corner and pray. Sometimes we got to pray when, when, when we're even looking at other people. We got to have to pray. Sometimes our lips are not moving. But we have to pray. Sometimes we just have to know that we're talking to God. Have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your famous cry and he'll answer by and by. When we look at this prayer, uh, we look at the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. There are some who are still debating what do we call it. Uh, again, I submit to you that when you're going through, uh, listen, sometimes you're not concerned about what it's called. It's good to know it for the sake of, 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 of education. But every now and then, you, you just need to know that you know this prayer. I believe that every Christian ought to know the Lord's Prayer. And, and so when we look at the Lord's Prayer, we, it begins by, Our Father, which art in heaven. This is the address. This is the, Jesus is saying that we, we ought to address the Lord, if you will. We address the Lord, our Father. We, we, we have simulation there. We, we, we have lineage there. That, that I'm not just praying to some. I'm praying to my Father. And when I'm praying to my Father, I know that he will hear. I'm praying to my Father because he is my Father. Our Father, uh, who art in heaven. Yes, 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 you're, you're in heaven. Why? Because you're everywhere. And, and hallowed be your name. Consecrated is your name. When we understand uh, a consecration, we're worshiping his name. Hallowed be your name. There's no other name uh, on heaven or earth by which man can be made whole. Hallowed be thy name. Uh, uh, thy kingdom come. It has to do with acknowledgement. I acknowledge, God, that wherever I am, this is your kingdom. Thy kingdom come and, 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 and your will be done wherever I am. Uh, you're there also, and 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 and, and what a what a wonderful thing to acknowledge that, that that God is in your presence, even even as you're praying to Him. That that will be done, God. I'm praying to you because because I want Your will to be done. There are sometimes that my will don't line up with God's will, and we have to lean and 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 and, and allow God to have His way and allow God to have His. I'm talking to somebody today that you just need to let God have His way. You need to ask Him what is His will concerning you. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, you're a big God, and, and, and I love you so much. Why? Because your will is not only on, 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 on earth, but it's also in heaven. It's everywhere that we, that we look. Uh, uh, give us this day. Give us this day. I'm asking now. God, give us the same manner that you gave to the Israelites. Give us whatever we need on this day. So many of us can attest to the fact that there are some things we need today that we didn't need yesterday. But God knows everything that we need. And there are some things we need today that we may not need tomorrow. But God knows what day it is, and he knows what we need. So give us this day our daily bread. And, and, and forgive us. Forgive us our trespasses. God, I've done some things willfully, and I've done some things I didn't even know that I did. But will you please just forgive me? This is Jesus telling us how to pray. For, forgive us. I'm, I'm confessing that there are some things that I need you to fix. There are some things that I need you to work on. There are some things that I need you to show me. I need you to show me your way. Forgive us this day, our, our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and as, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. There are people who trespass against I cannot expect and you cannot expect God to forgive you if you cannot forgive them. You need to forgive some people in your life. You don't need to get hung up 
on all of the things that somebody have done to you. Some of those things you need to learn from. You don't need to get so hung up until you don't have a connection with God. Sometimes that will interfere with your connection with God. Someone is watching this morning and that has interfered with your connection with your children. It has interfered with your connection with your family. It has interfered with your connections on people on your job. It has interfered with your connections even with God. You need to forgive somebody. Why? Because God has forgiven you. And Lead us not. Lead me not into temptation. Guide me. If you guide me, I'll be guided. Guide me to wherever you would have me to go. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from the devil. Someone just needs to tell him right now, deliver me. Deliver my child. Deliver my circumstances from the devil. Deliver me from, from evil. For, 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 for thine is the kingdom. This is not all that, that, that Matthew is saying, but thine is the kingdom and, and the power and the glory. God, you are who you are forever and forever. And because you are who you are, God, I believe that you're hearing my prayer. Because you're who you are, I believe that you're doing something about what I'm praying. Because you are who you are, I believe that, that you will allow the Holy Spirit to help me so that I can line up with your will concerning my life. I believe that every Christian ought to know the model prayer or the Lord's prayer. Why? Because when you can't think of anything else to say, that you ought to be able to recite the Lord's Prayer. Someone need to teach that to their child. You need to start doing it today. Getting ready to go back to school. COVID virus is still running and some all classes won't be, of course, person to person, but, but we still need to pray for our children. We need to teach our children how to pray and we need to teach them how to pray in sincerity. So today I thank God for the model prayer. I thank God for the Lord's Prayer. And I pray that it has been a blessing to you. And if it has been a blessing to you, perhaps this is a wonderful time for you to give your life to Christ. Yes, you can do it at this venue. You can do it today. Why wait until tomorrow? If that person is you, if that person is you, I want to challenge you to just do it. Just do it. Just give your life to Christ. He's waiting on you. He's waiting with open arms. He's waiting on you to do just that. And if that person is you, would you repeat these words with me? Say, dear Lord, here I am. With all my circumstances, with all my situation, but I come to you in the best manner that I know how. Receive me, Lord, to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I call it done, and I thank and I praise God for each and every one of you on today. And until we meet again, I pray that you will continue to hold to God's unchanging hand. May God bless you.